This is Dolany TV, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to an early morning episode for me. I was in bed like five minutes ago, I swear you not. And well, we have some uh, news finally on the Oilers front and that's the exact thing I didn't want to hear, like I said, to kick me out of bed in the morning. We've bought out Andre Sekra, which, uh, well, as you guys know, I was anti-buyout throughout the whole process. I did mention Sekra is one of the best buyouts we could do if we would do such a thing, and we have done such a thing. So here we are now with an extra few bits in cap space. I'll go over to Cap Friendly and just start breaking it down for you right now because this is uh, as best I can do first thing in the morning. I'm a little bit tired, like I said, and now we get to do the math. The Oilers now, with the buyout of Sekra, have $11.33 million in cap space. That's the big number here. The cap space is saved because Sekra, who is carrying a $5.5 million well, cap hit up until 2021, so two seasons from now, next season and the year after, now only carries a cap hit on the bio penalty of 2.5 for this season and next, and then 1.5 for the next two seasons after that. That's the magic numbers with Andre Sekra. So now we have to sit here and realize, okay, what does this mean? Andre Sekra, Botto will be paying him for the next four years. That's tough. That's, I mean, that's why I always argued against the bio penalties, because now essentially you're paying the Edmonton Oilers, for that $3 million in cap space, are paying, well, sorry, this number's stupid, $3.1 million in bio penalties towards the cap for Benoit Pouliot, Eric Graba, and Andre Sacra. Just dumb. Just dumb. That's, that's as easy as I can make it. That, that number hurts, especially given our cap space situation. However, the benefit here is you've got Ryan Nugent Hopkins to sign, and this is the big ticket item. This is, do we have the cap space to sign Nuge? Realistically, we will have that Benoit Pouliot $1.3 million off the table when it comes to signing Nuge, and we'll only have $1.5 million left on Sekra that year coming up. So that's, that's the big number right there is right now we're spending 1.6 plus Sekra's new hit of 2.5 to the bio penalty. So realistically, when you're spending 3.1 and you go down to 1.5, the others should be able to afford, with a good cap, to re-sign Nugent Hopkins. So that's the big uh, overarching theme on the numbers, right? That's the numbers breakdown when it comes to Andre Sekra. This buyout, as I said, was the one that made the most sense. No buyout, in my estimation, made any sense. But this one made the most, if you get what I mean, right? The most of none. I don't know if that makes sense. Maybe it's first thing rolling out of bed in the morning and not making sense myself. But you get where I'm going with what I'm trying to do. So, what does that leave us? The Oilers now have one less defenseman on the roster, still one problem they have to deal with, and that, that leaves you it, it there, right? That's as simple as that. That leaves you Brandon Manning to trade away. You trade away that 2.25 cap hit. Suddenly, we're talking $13.5 million in cap space for the Edmonton Oilers. Guys, that is absolutely dumb. If you would have come into this offseason and said, on July 1st, the Edmonton Oilers are going to have $13.5 million in cap space, not a single one of us would have believed it. Yes, granted, we still have to trade Manning. Don't kid me there. I know what has to happen to get there. But you look at it this way. You get Manning gone either today, early tomorrow, or on the July 2nd, somewhere in there. Guys, bang. Right there, we've got ourselves the cap space to actually be able to weaponize in free agency. That's exactly awesome. Now, that gets to my next point because the next point is this Andre Sekera buyout literally 
I'm still, I still got to talk about the kids, but this literally means that we're going for the playoffs this year. You don't go out, buy out Andre Sacra, get out from underneath a bad contract, still with some cap hit against it, and buy that cap space, buy $3 million in cap space to not compete, right? We could, we could have easily solved all our problems with that $8 million. It wouldn't have been pretty. It wouldn't have been to a lot of people's satisfaction, but we could have done it easily. Don't kid yourself there, right? There's plenty of guys for one and a half mil, one mil, a goaltender for 1.25. Wouldn't have been fine. Like you might have been lucky to get Mike Smith for 1.25, but you get where I'm going with that, right? Is we could have solved it. But now with 11.3 and potentially 13.5 if Ken Holland can deal Mr. Brandon Manning. Guys, we are in it to win it this year. Yes, okay, you have to go spend against the cap. I understand that. But this is this is the thing here. You would have had to do that if Andre Sekera got injured in the offseason anyway to use the LTIR money to full effect, which is what we did last year, which is how we got to this situation, which is why we are where we are, and blah, 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 blah. Crap runs downstream. We know how it works. But right there, that's that's the thing. We actually have the money to weaponize to be a playoff team if we compete. That's the thing. We have to compete on the ice. It doesn't matter who you have in the lineup. I, You could go sign Phil Kessel, Evgeny Malkin. You, you could sign half the Pittsburgh roster Keep McDavid dry settle and Nuge intact and play like crap and still not make the playoffs. That's the thing. You got to go out there and compete. So as far as I'm making it as simple as I can, it really isn't that simple. But if you go out there and compete with the roster we can build now with potentially 3.5 or 13.5 in cap space, there is no reason it can't happen. That's what I'm saying. The problem is there is one slight glitch in it is the fact that now you have to take it on yourself to trust. If you're Dave Tippett, you have to trust and allow opportunity to one of the four. If you've followed the channel long enough, if you follow the Edmonton Oilers daily, you know who the four, the four young guys on the back end are. Do I need to say it? Jones, Bear, Bouchard, Person. There you go. That's the four on the back end who now will get a chance at camp to compete for a roster spot on an Oilers defense that is sacralist. That's exactly what just happened as well. There's three prongs to this, four prongs to this. Guys, we're going to hear all about this for years still to come. We've got Andre Sacker on the books for the next four, so don't kid yourself. But there are a lot of prongs to this that make so much sense for the Oilers. However, as I said, still not the best situation. We could have traded Sekera somewhere for a seventh round pick. Guys, we've seen it happening. We've seen how it's working. We could get it done, but it isn't going to happen. And that's the unfortunate part about it. So with Sekera bought out, we look forward to a Brandon Manning trade and look forward to getting ourselves where we need to be by September 10th to start competing for the Stanley Cup playoffs for the first time since 2016-2017. That's the exciting part about this because guys, you look at it, right? We still need that centerman. We still need that winger. We still need a goalie. And it's as simple as that. You've got Miko Koskinen as the only backup, as the only goalie on the roster right now. You've got Connor McDavid, Leon Dreisettle, Milan Lucic, Ryan Nugent Hopkins, Sam Gagne, Zach Kazian, Kyle Brodziak, Joachim Nygaard, Colby Cave. Jujar Karras still got to accept his qualifying offer or sign a new contract. On the defense, you've got Oscar Clefbaum, Adam Larson, Chris Russell, Darnell Nurse, Matthew Benning, and Joel Person. That's, yeah, probably about the same thing we had last year. However, you look at it now, guys. There's that chance, right? Joel Person isn't a lock, nor is a guy like Bouchard, nor is Bear, nor is Jones. Samarukov may come out of nowhere and surprise us. That's worst case scenario if Samarukov's in the lineup on opening night, though. So, guys, that's where I'm going to leave you. Let me know your thoughts 
on the Andre Sacra buyout. As always, I'm Tyson, this stolen on TV. I will catch you guys in the next one. Make sure to hit that comment section down below because you want to chat with me in there. I'll catch you guys. I am up on out of here.